Gemma, you've rowed and you've coxed and coached for uh, Newham College Boat Club. It's the historic founding club of women's rowing in, in Cambridge. 1893, members of Newnham College got together and founded the Newnham College Rowing Society. Regulations at the time, they had to basically be covered up. So it was full length skirts, high blouses. Boats have sliding seats, so your skirt will get all tucked up underneath you. I imagine it was really difficult. We've got in the exhibition this pair of shorts, so some women made the change in what they were wearing. In the 1920s, these shorts were brought in, but as you can see, they were very long, sort of knee-length shorts, with stockings, of course, so still covered up. That was only permitted um, down at Clayhide, so they wouldn't be rowing with this kit nearby here with the other men. We can speculate that that's because people didn't want to distract the men from their more important training, didn't want to excite the men whilst they were supposed to be focused. It, this almost looks like the women were trying to camouflage into the background, the <laughs> dark brown, as invisible as possible. Did the Newnham rowers get the chance to, to row races? Today, the most exciting race that the Cambridge University Boat Club are training for is their varsity match against Oxford. The first one of those happened in 1927. So rather than timed course, first one to complete the course wins, it was um, judged on style and timing. So the two boats essentially process one after the other in front of judges, looking at people's posture, their timing against each other, because of course women weren't allowed to work up a sweat right. in the 1920s, that so, would have been very inappropriate. We owe a huge debt of gratitude to Newnham College and to Girton. It was Iris Preston from Newnham College who set about organising the establishment of Cambridge University Women's Boat Club. And so then the first race as CUWBC was in 1941 against Oxford. Mm. Things were booming for women during World War Two and just after after. Were they running into any opposition in that kind of growth phase? Running a club takes finance and there wasn't a huge amount of financial support for women's sport. Right up until the turn of the century, our club didn't have anywhere to base itself on the CAM. So you had nowhere to store equipment, you had nowhere for people to meet, you had nowhere for people to train together. The University Women's Boat Club was borrowing boats from different clubs every time it went on an outing. Yep. What was going on with this boathouse? Well, this was the home of CEBC. This was their castle and it's a fantastic building. So women weren't allowed into this clubhouse? No, not at all. No, not at all. No, you weren't allowed in here. They could only walk past. I came up as a graduate from London where I'd been training alongside my male counterparts at the university, been rowing in the British team, came up to Cambridge and was completely amazed that it was so entirely different. We only came in here in 2013 when um, some fundraising with the university and with colleges and with our alumni uh, put an extension onto the building. So now there were women's changing rooms. And so we moved in here. So that was the first time we had a base. We've been talking about the kind of ups and downs of women's rowing and it's, it's been a struggle. Do you think that struggle is over now? No, I, th I, I don't think it has. I think we're still some way off you know, full equality. We still need to have the same number of people watching the women's boat race as watch the men's. Appreciating you know, the sporting endeavours that we're undertaking and also financially, we're still not in the same level playing field of funding for women's sport as there is for men's. So it's been interesting for me looking at the history of women's rowing at, at Cambridge and what strikes me is the inventiveness of women at getting over some of their obstacles. So you look at the homemade posters they were making for the varsity race in the 1970s. You know, they're just hand-drawn, hand-lettered, inviting people to come and support them when they didn't have very much support. Mm. And there's a lovely story from the 1960s about the women's boat club sewing their own flag because they didn't have a flag. So even at a time when they didn't have their own boathouse, they were determined to fly the flag for women's rowing, even if they had to sew that themselves. That's an interesting parallel today because we were just talking um, just at the weekend about getting a flag erected on our sort of new patch of land. So if we don't have a roof, we can get a flag up and it yeah. can be ours. So it's a nice parallel. Yeah, lovely.